in the mists of Mecca. Mecca, after being under the Saudi rule, became an example for those who were involved in the study of city development. Its appearance was no doubt in accordance to suit its climate and conditions, having narrow streets and tall buildings served as a great benefit in combating the high, dry temperatures of Mecca, producing shade for the residents. The first expansion of the Holy Mosque was done by the Khalifa Umar ibn al-Khattab in the 17th year of Hijrah. Then after him was Uthman ibn Affan in the 18th year of Hijrah. The Holy Mosque then underwent a numerous amount of expansions and constructions over a period of years in the time of the Ummiyin and the Abbasiyin and the Uthmaniyin and lastly the Saudis. The most significant expansion was that which King Abdul Aziz oversaw in the year 1368 Hijri, which continued for 20 years, and the area of the Haram amounted to 160,000 cubic meters, after being less than 19,000 cubic meters. The masjid was renovated into two levels and tiled from the inside and the outside with expensive marble tiles. The new expansion was connected to the old Uthmani expansion, as well as the Zamzam entrance was moved a little away from the Kaaba to make more room for those performing Tawaf. The area for the Tawaf around the Kaaba was expanded to three times its former size and was tiled with unique white tile, which is unique in that it does not absorb heat and the door to the Kaaba was replaced with with a beautiful gold-plated door from pure gold which weighed 268 kilograms. This expansion also included the renovation of the place of Sa'i which is between the two mountains Safa and Marwa and was made into two levels to accommodate more pilgrims. The custodian of the two sacred mosques King Fahad ibn Abdul Aziz also did some notable renovations to the sacred mosque. From them were the building of six bridges over the place of Sa'i and installing many escalators and elevators to make easy access to all levels of the mosque. He also renovated the roof of the sacred mosque such that it could be used for Salah, Tawaf and Sa'i when needed. By this expansion, the sacred mosque was now able to accommodate approximately one million persons and transportation services were improved such that it could accommodate millions of people. This was perhaps the most significant renovation that the Haram underwent in its history, and that was a result of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Fahad ibn Abdul Aziz's readiness to welcome the many pilgrims that were coming in. On the second day in the month of Safar, in the year 1409 Hijri, the custodian of the two holy mosques placed the first stone to celebrate the project of expanding the Holy Mosque and spent over 6,800 million rials in this project. As for its design and appearance, it was kept the same, except that it was extended and a few additions were made. From them is that a new main entrance was made and two new minarets were built, resembling the seven minarets that were prior to it its height reaching 180 meters. Also two buildings were built connected to the Haram in which the escalators would be put in. One was on the northern side of the mosque and one on the southern side. The courtyard around the mosque was tiled in expensive white tile which is heat resistant. The holy mosque was now able to hold over one million people. Surely the sight of the Holy Mosque during the last ten nights of Ramadan is like none other throughout the year. For therein they pray Salat al-Tarawih and Tahajjud and therein hands are raised begging and hearts hoping and tears are shed, all of them seeking forgiveness of their Lord. The Most High says, And none can forgive sins but Allah. Surah Al-Imran
أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله Masjid al-Aqsa The preceding is a brief summary on the history of Masjid al-Aqsa going back from 5,000 years since the time the Busiyun were dominating. Then from their family came Al-Qunan, which were a people that had Arab background. They were a people that were good to Quds, and so Quds was good to them. Quds became more developed, with buildings and the population grew. The many olive trees in Quds were a symbol of love, and a sign of gratitude to its people. During this time, Quds went through more than 25 different battles, and still Quds and his people were in a good state. Quds is considered to be a main historic site, filled with symbolic meanings and very unique city. Quds is like that of a bridge, which joins between the heavens and the earth, since many the Ida. Quds is like that of a bridge, since many prophets descended there, like a fresh pure flowing river, like a bright light for a traveler trying to find his way in the dark. Ever since the night of the ascension, Quds became the first Qibla for the Muslims. They all faced the direction of Quds with their hearts, before actually seeing it with their eyes. Quds lived in the hearts of Muslims before they lived in Quds, and every Muslim was anxious to visit Quds. In the year 636, according to English calendar, Quds became under the rule of Umar ibn al-Khattab. May Allah be pleased with him, the second Khalifa of Islam. Quds has a very interesting past. Quds reached its peak in advancement after becoming under the rule of Islam, such that many other nations were surprised. And why shouldn't have Quds surpassed other nations? And the one who opened Quds to the Muslims from the very first was our noble messenger, peace be upon him. It is reported that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, There will always be a group from my ummah upholding the truth, victorious over their enemies. They are not harmed by those who oppose them, nor by what afflictions befall them, until the command of Allah comes to them. The Sahabas asked, O messenger of Allah, and where are these people? <laughs> 